Hello and welcome to another episode of Punto How To. In this episode I'm going to be looking at changing the front brakes on my 2011 Fiat Punto Evo. No matter what I do I always seem to buy cars that need the front brakes doing. This particular car was very cheap so it was hardly a surprise to find that the front brake pads were very badly worn and that the brake discs themselves were also quite badly worn and lipped. I'll show you this in a minute but first we need to get the wheels off so I start by cracking all the wheel nuts and then we get the car off the ground before taking the wheel nuts out and then taking off the wheel. Safety first here guys, always make sure that you secure the handbrake of the car, chop the back wheels and secure the car on an axle stand just to keep it off the ground just in case the jack fails. Before I continue, I just want to take a moment to thank you for watching. If you haven't already done so, please consider clicking subscribe on the button just below the video. Give us a thumbs up, and if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. As you've probably noticed, because this is the sporting model, it has bright red painted calipers. This was done by Fiat in the factory. It's worth noting though, they're not much different from the calipers on the normal Grande as shown here. I removed the two bolts from the carrier, top and bottom. This, um, this holds the caliper onto the back of the carrier and um, allows me to then take the caliper away, leaving the pads and the carrier in place. While doing this, I notice that the wire for the brake wear sensors has completely severed and detached, so um, I just unplug it and throw it to one side. It's not much use and it hasn't really done its job because I don't have a warning light telling me that the uh, brake pads are worn. Now I can remove the carrier. So this is just a case of getting hold of it and giving it a bit of a tug just to pull it away from the rest of the brake carrier. As you can see the carrier and the pads are left behind in place. Be sure to tie the caliper up with a big tie wrap or something to one of the suspension springs just to keep it out of the way and to stop any strain on the brake pipe. There are two more bolts that hold the brake pad carrier in place. To undo these bolts you'll need one of these external torque sockets. I picked up a set of these for about £10 from my local motor factor. They come marked as E numbers. Um, so this one is an E16 and it fits on a standard half inch socket wrench. Once we've removed the carrier we can turn our attention to the disc. There are two bolts in the front of the disc that hold it in place. These can be very stubborn and difficult to remove. On the Evo we had to wedge a screwdriver into the cooling vents of the disc and then wrench it with a socket set. However when I did the Grande they were much easier to remove as you can see here we just used a normal allen key type torque bit to undo these bolts. Here's one of the old discs removed from the car. As you can see there's quite a lip around the edge of the disc which I'll try and show you up close where the pads have ground themselves into the into the metal of the brake disc itself. They're quite badly corroded and rusted around the edges as well. Turning our attention to the brake pads, you can see there's not a lot of material left on the brake pad itself, um, maybe a few thousand miles more. Um, here's the other brake pad from the inside, and again you can see there's not a lot of material left on that. And if we just um, compare that to one of the new brake pads, which we've got here as well, you can see, I'm just bringing that in, that there's a lot of material on the brand new brake pads. Um, it's a good sort of half an inch, three quarters of an inch there. These ones are definitely worn out. So let's start putting things back together. Here we've got one of the brand new brake discs and they always come with a coating of oil on them to keep them from rusting when they're in uh, transit. So we give them a good clean with some brake cleaner on both sides to make sure there's no grease or oil contaminating the braking surface. I smear a little bit of copper grease on the hub. This just hopefully will stop the new brake disc from sticking and rusting to the hub the next time they need changing. Then I put the new brake disc on the hub like so being careful of the brake caliper and then line it up with the holes in the hub and pop one of the screws back in just to hold the brake disc in place. And with the brake disc side of things done we now turn our attentions to putting the pads and calipers back together. Here is our brake pad carrier and as you can see it's pretty dirty and there's some clips that are pretty rusty and what we need to do now is remove all these clips and fit some shiny new ones which I have here. So I remove all of the 
old clips with a screwdriver, these simply ping off. They don't take any effort whatsoever. And then what I'm going to do is give everything a good spray with brake cleaner. And then with a nylon bristle brush, I'm just going to brush off as much loose dirt and grime as I can just to try and get this as clean as possible before putting the new pads in. I'm then going to remove these sliders. These are what allow the brake caliper to move backwards and forwards and, and grasp on the brake disc. These simply just unpick the uh, seal from the rubber boots around them and then I'm going to take them out and I'm going to give them a bit of a dunk in some grease just to make sure that they move nice and smoothly. And then we refit the new clips into the um, carrier. And then once I've refitted them all, what I'm going to do is give each one a little smear of grease, just a very light smearing, just to make sure that the pads themselves can move smoothly within the carrier. This is ready to go back on the car. The carrier goes back on the car and is simply bolted in place with those two large Torx bolts again. I then refit the brake pads, making sure to get them the right way round. These simply slot into the carrier like so. First the one on the front and then I grab the one to put in the back. So this is the same process just from a different angle. So you put the brake pad in the front and just slot that in. Get that nestled up against the disc and then pop the one in the back as well like so. Then what I'm going to do is take a little smear of um, copper slip grease and I'm going to pop that on the back of the brake pads just to uh, just to help reduce brake squeal. Here on the driver's side we pop the pads in as well but you'll notice this inside pad has a wire coming off it. This is the brake pad wear sensor. Theoretically there's a little metal uh, conductor embedded in the brake pad material and as the pads wear down um, this eventually makes contact with the disc and it creates an earthed circuit and this should turn on a little light, light on the dashboard but as you saw from earlier in the video the, the wire had been chewed through by the edge of the brake disc and this had detached and hadn't actually worked. However with some new brake discs and uh, new pads this stands much more chance of working as there won't be such a lip on the edge of these brake discs when these pads eventually wear out. It was the rusty lip on the old brake discs that had actually just cut through the wire eventually. Now you may have noticed how far out the piston is sticking here. We need to push that back in but the fact that it's sticking out so far just gives you some indication of how badly worn the brakes were. Now to do this is with a large G clamp and what I do is I hook the clamp over the caliper like so, put the end of the clamp into the middle of the piston and then with the clamp firmly on the back of the caliper, I gently just wind the piston back in until it's all the way back. When you do this, take the lid off the reservoir for the brake fluid so it, the fluid can move backwards up into the reservoir without air getting trapped and compressed inside the reservoir. It's not a pressurised reservoir like the coolant system, therefore you don't want that pressure to, to burst the reservoir and then you have a brake fluid leak inside the engine bay. Once that piston is pushed all the way back, remove the clamp and then you should be able to simply slot the caliper over the back of the new brake pads. Obviously in this case being sure to feed the wire for the uh, brake wear sensor through the middle of the caliper. I'm then going to clip the brake wear sensor wire in place on the back of the caliper and then I'm going to plug it back into its wiring connector connecting it to the car. And finally we pop the two little bolts back in that hold the caliper onto the um, sliders for the carrier um, and we tighten these up and that is the whole brake caliper carrier and disc assembly all renewed, refreshed and ready to go back into work. This is what the finished article looks like on the passenger side of the car. As you can see it all looks nice and clean and shiny. We've got new Brembo pads in there and some nice shiny new discs as well. Finishing off we put the wheels back on the car and then we lower the car down to the ground before we tighten up the wheel bolts to make sure that we get enough torque on them. And the last thing we want is the wheels to come off having done all this work on the brakes. 
We then take the car out on a careful test drive just to make sure everything's working properly. It's going to take probably about 200 miles or so for these to all fully bed in, but they should be working pretty well straight from the start, especially compared to with the uh, old brakes and how badly worn they were. Thanks for watching right to the end. Do be sure to check out the other videos on our channel. Shown on the screen now are a couple of videos that YouTube thinks you may be interested in. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Do give us a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, click the subscribe button and be sure to hit that bell notification. This will tell you when we have new videos uploaded so that you get to see them before anybody else. Thanks for watching and see you next time.